Hi guys and welcome to my tutorial on botting uh, Simba without taking your taking over your mouse and keyboard. Uh, traditionally with Simba, uh, with color botting in general, you effectively have to lose control of your mouse and keyboard in order to run the scripts, uh, which can be quite bothersome, especially if you only have one computer. Um, ways around this in the past have been using programs such as VMware or VirtualBox, uh, which can be quite resource intensive and I generally just don't like them because they take up way too much room and they're inconvenient. So this method I'm going to be showing you today will allow you to bypass all that. It'll allow you to effectively do the same thing as what a virtual box allows you to do without using anywhere near as many resources and actually set up custom um, RuneLine and OpenOSRS profiles for these bots, uh, obviously part of the script requirements without overwriting your uh, script, your your um your settings in your main sort of saves. Uh, so the software we're going to be using today is called RDP Wrap, and it, effectively it's a remote desktop that allows you to remotely access a second or a third or a fourth or a f even a fifth user profile in your Windows PC. So you can create you know multiple sub users when you within your PC, so sep like sec second login profiles, so login profiles, and then remotely access them and run the bots through that. So it's actually quite clever. So uh, shout out goes to uh, Slacky for. Um, obviously writing the, the first method for this. Um, this is how I learned how to do it um, and I've actually written a guide on how to update this as well which is I'm also going to cover in this video uh, as Windows does occasionally like to break this as it's not really a uh, something that they support. So let's get straight into it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is access the GitHub um, which I'm going to put a link in the description uh, of the video. Uh, so you want to access the GitHub and you want to download the latest version which at the moment at the time of this video is 1.6.2 and you want to download the zip file, you don't want to download the MSI, so make sure you download the zip file. And I'm just going to open it. So you can see here, I was going to minimize this now, you can see here we've got the uh, the contents of the zip file here. So it's going to create a, a temporary folder on our desktop, um, or it can be a permanent folder depending on whether you want to have to go through this process or not when it when you update it. Uh, I'm just going to drag the contents of the, file, of, of the zip file into here, and then close that. So now you can see here we've got our um, We've got all of our, our RDP wrap stuff in here, so I'm just going to quickly uninstall mine. That way I can run through the installation process as part of this video. Now, to install it's just a simple matter of clicking on the, in, the install bat file. Hit yes when the uh, admin profile prompts you. And then that's it. That's all been installed. Now, as I mentioned, Windows likes to break this, and this particular version of RDP wrap is broken, which we can see by opening up the RDP configuration. And you can see here that it's currently not supported. So in order to diagnose this as working, all of these, the, all this bit of text here needs to be green, including this. So if you have server state or listener state as not listening or, or in red, it means that your remote desktop uh, isn't working or um, yeah, it needs to be re-enabled. Uh, if it says, if these are all running as green, everything's working fine, except the fact that your version number isn't currently up to date. So we're gonna take note of here is of this particular version number. And what we're gonna do, is we're going to pull open our browser and we're going to um, punch this into Google. So we're going to go uh, RDP wrap and then we're going to type in 10.0.19041.84 which is currently the version number here. Obviously yours is going to be different if you're watching this video at a later date when this is no longer the, the current version and then we're going to hit enter. Now you can see here there's a lot of GitHub issues and, and, and requests and whatnot for it so we're usually just going to click the top link here because it's going to be the most current and we're effectively going to scroll through until we find uh, someone who's posted an update. Um, Alright that one there isn't one of the updates so we're going to Basically, it's going to scroll through until we can find a, a large patch of code, which is going to be very. Uh... There we go. Okay, awesome. So here's the uh, here's the code here. So you can see here there's a, basically a list of, you know, uh, values that make absolutely no sense. But you can see here that we have the uh, the version number which matches our version number here. Um, and I'll show you why we're going to use this in just a moment. Uh, in the meantime though, we're going to navigate into our PC, we're going to go to local disk, uh, we're going to go to um, program files, and we're going to look for a, pro a folder called RDP wrapper. Uh, we are going to 
Uh, right click on the configuration settings, which is the INI file here. And I'm going to click edit, which should bring up the or the I guess the version and all the diff, all the details in the uh, on the notepad. You can see there's different versions past have all been updated. So we're going to scroll right to the bottom uh, of this this file, and you can see at the very bottom is a space. Uh, there's a there's a there's a blank line below. So you want to always make always make sure that when you when you save this file, there's always a blank uh, a blank line below this. Otherwise, it's going to mess up. So you can see here that the latest version is not obviously matching what our our current RDP thing is. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that match. So we're going to copy all of this, copy it, and then we're going to put a space below that, and then we're going to paste it, and then we're going to put a space in there again. Now, just because I'm pedantic, I'm going to separate all of that. And then we're going to hit save. Now, sometimes if you're presented with this uh, this pop-up, you're asking you to rename or, or basically create a new file. It means that you lack the file permissions for RDP wrapper. This is a very common issue. Now, what you want to do if you if you basically if you put in in this position, what you want to do is you want to save it in a temporary folder so we can put it in our, in our temporary folder. So I'm going to change this to all files. I'm going to change this to .ini, which is the extension for the configuration file. I'm going to navigate to our desktop, just to our, our temporary folder, and I'm going to save it. So that's all been saved, and I can close that off. Now, this is still the old version here, which we need to basically get rid of. Um, now, if we try to attempt to do this by deleting, it's going to say we'll need admin permissions, and we'll attempt to do it. Now, because our remote desktop is still running, it's not going to let us delete this. So what we're going to do is we're going to close, we're just going to minimize this, and we're going to open up our command prompt. And then in our command, well, sorry, we're going to open up a command prompt in admin. That would be the smart thing to do. So run the command prompt in admin, and then we're going to type net stop term service. And then press Y to confirm. Now this is going to stop our remote desktop service, allowing us to manipulate this file. So now I can delete that RDP file, and it's gone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my temporary folder again, and I'm going to drag my RDP wrap configuration settings in here and I'm going to type in net start term service and start the remote desktop service again. I'm going to close the command prompt, we're not going to need that anymore and we're going to check our config and see if it's working. As you can see here it is now fully supported. Now if we want to test this um, the easiest thing to do would be to create a user profile. So I'm going to take you through this this, this now, that way you can do a full-on test and then configure if it does work. So we're going to go to our, uh, our start menu, type in user, and we're going to add, edit, or remove users, which is what it looks like here. So we're going to go add, you can see I've already got my second profile here for my account. So we're going to go add someone else to this PC. I don't have this person's sign-in information. add a user without a Microsoft account and then I'm going to call this whatever we like. So I'm going to call this Simba2. Make the password whatever is relevant to you and then the security questions it honestly doesn't matter because it's, you know it's your your details so and that's it. So you can see this at the moment this is a local account we want this to be an administrator so we can install programs and whatnot as well. So we're going to click, uh, click on Simba2 change the account type and set that as an administrator and hit OK. So now we have a, a, a user account called Simba2 that we can log into on this computer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the remote desktop. This is the remote desktop tool here. Uh, we're going to punch in our local IP address which is 127.0.0. Instead of doing .1 which is our local IP, we're going to do .2 which is what allows us to connect to another um, IP address. So we're going to hit connect. Now, you can see it's already got my credentials saved in here. If it doesn't pop up with this for you, you'll need to enter um, the, the account details like this. So I'm going to put in Simba2 and then my password. And I don't generally click Remember Me um, because I, I notice it does stuff up sometimes. But I'm going to hit OK. 
and you can see on here now that it's currently loading up a second version of Windows within my PC. So we'll just wait for this to boot up. It's going to turn all the uh, Microsoft spyware off. And there you have it. We have a completely separate uh, user profile within Windows. Now what I'm going to do, because I don't like running this at the same monitor rate as mine, because I'm running a 1440p monitor, I'm going to show you something cool if you're also running a, a larger monitor that's larger than 1920 by 1080 You can actually choose what size this opens up into. So we're going to go back into the remote desktop again. We're going to go to show options, change the display and set it to 1920 by 1080 and then hit connect. Put our password in again and there you go. That's a full on 1920 by 1080 desktop size there. So ideal for any of my scripts, anything Simba, like any sort of resizable Simba clients, gives you ample room to, to set it up and, and put it on the on the screen. Um, and you can basically do all of your installations here. Now common files such as um, such as Simba, Simba is basically shared throughout all PC, uh, throughout all of your Windows profiles. So if I go into local C, uh, local disk, go to Simba, you can see I've got all my, my all my Simba files here. Now um, you uh, want to the, the thing that won't share obviously won't share um, files that are very user that are basically uh, Windows user user specific are things like RuneLite and OpenOSRS. So basically, when you install RuneLite and OpenOSRS in here, um, it's going to be unique. So if you put a setting on, obviously, if you change say you know GPU mode off in this particular environment and then turn it on in this particular environment, it's going to remain on, whereas it's going to obviously be off on here. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much all there is to it. So, uh, sorry, there was a, a couple of things I did forget to mention uh, while I created the original clip for this video, so I will go through them very quickly with you now. Um, with the remote desktop, if you're running a RuneScape bot, uh, specifically with Simba, you cannot minimize this. This needs to stay open. Um, what I usually do is what I, I'll have the you know the RuneScape client open, Simba open, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of have it close off nice and small, and then kind of push the side to the the corner of my my computer or whatnot. You can have uh, things over it, such as you know like explorers or even other games. You just can't have this minimized. Otherwise, the uh, the client unpairs from Simba and it just errors out. Um, I'm going to show you a, a couple of bits of code that were mentioned in Slacky's tutorial which I'm not sure if they still work or not. Um, I haven't really had any luck with this but you guys might so I'll, I'll take you through it anyway just in case. Uh, so in order to sign out of a uh, obviously a remote desktop you don't, just, you don't just want to close your remote desktop session because your Windows profile will remain logged in. So to exit out of it you want to click on the start menu, click on the little profile icon here and then click sign out and that's going to sign out of our second session. Uh, it's also worth noting that if you're running things like TeamViewer and whatnot, um, it will actually transfer the primary TeamViewer um, connection from this desktop profile into the other desktop profile. So just bear that in mind. So if someone tries to remote in, access into your PC, they're going to see that other desktop, not this one. Um, so basically to edit and to add these values into your registry, you want to open up RegEdit. So you do that by pressing start, typing reg edit, and there's registry editor. Open it up. Give it up, you know, give it all the admin access, and what you want to do is you want to basically uh, follow the the locations here. So we want to go to H key local machine. We want to go to software. Uh, we want to go to um, Microsoft. Uh, and then terminal server client. and click on Terminal Server Client. Now you can see here I don't have the, the registries entered, so I'm going to enter them now with you. Um, to enter a new registry into RegEdit, simply, so once you've selected this, it's going to come up with, obviously, on the right-hand panel. You want to right-click on the right-hand panel and click New, and then click D-Word. It's a 32-bit value. We want to call this Remote Desktop Suppress When Minimized. Now this is case-sensitive, so I'm just going to 
Actually, I'm just going to delete that, sorry. So it's it's recommended to have this um, put onto your clipboard. So Control C, new D Word 32 bit value, and then Control V. Make sure there's no, there's no space after it, and then hit Enter. So you can see here we've got our new registry key. And then we're going to right click and click modify. We're going to change this to decimal value and we're going to set this to 2 and hit OK. Uh, and then we're going to repeat that exact same process with uh, within this particular directory. So uh, basically HK local machine software and then WOW node 64 I think it is. Yeah, we're 60, 64, node, and then we're going to look for um, uh, Microsoft and then Terminal Server. Terminal Server client, yep. Yeah. And repeat the exact same process. So it's the exact same value as well. So again, you don't, you just make sure it's on your key, on your, your clipboard still. Hit Control V. Right click on it, modify. Set decimal to, to, to click, tick the decimal, decimal box, and then set the value to 2. Now, effectively, what this will allow you to do is, I mean, in theory, it should allow you to minimize your remote desktop session um, while it's still running. But again, I I don't really have too much success. So the way I mentioned before is probably the ideal workaround. Have it kind of minimize up in, up in the corner or have it running on a separate monitor, which is also what I usually do. So, uh, and one of the cool things with this as well, which I'll quickly run through, is you can actually have um, multiple of these open at once. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So you can see here, I've got the uh, the computer IP address here, so 127.0.0.2. Now, if you wanted to have a, 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 a third profile logged in, you'd set this to .0.0.3 and then .0.0.4 respectively. So I'll hit connect, get that booted up, and I'm going to go to remote desktop again, set this to 3, hit connect. So you can see here I've got multiple desktops open now. And that's all there is to it. Uh, yeah, feel free to hit me up if you have any questions. Otherwise, happy botting.